Now concerning this weekend, unless your head's been in the sand, you are aware that <coughs> Iran retaliated for something that happened almost two weeks ago. in Syria where top Iranian officials military officials were killed in a bombing that happened in Syria I have one HOF here said with what has happened this weekend in Iran or with Iran it raises the question about Iran being a part of the Somali 3 war. Iran is Persian, not Arab. Iran is not part of the Somali 3 war. Their proxies will be. In a sense, you can say they're contributors to it because they provide the weaponry that these terrorist groups and nations used or are you are going to use to battle Israel but not part of Psalm 83 war I decided well, I've decided this a long time ago, but I decided to stop listening to the news media because they are worthless. I have never seen a more worthless crowd than the news media. They really don't report anything that is factual, practically, or useful. They have agenda, an agenda that they stick with and they have no concern for anyone to know the truth except their truth their made up truth that advances their agenda it is obvious so I did some research because I want to know the statistics of what's going on the reality the factual information, of course you know that Iran sent a bunch of drones and missiles in retaliation and 99% of them were intercepted. That's why <clears throat> when you finally see the Gog-Magog war happen, which will include Turkey and Libya and Iran and other players that will be in a ground invasion <clears throat> and this proves it what happened over the weekend yes yeah, some will get through and there will be some damages if more than 300 whether ballistic missiles or cruise missiles or backyard rockets it will create damage and deaths unfortunately in Israel but it's nowhere near gonna cause Israel to be in a defeated position that's why and of course you look at Turkey <coughs> they'll be the more f formidable foe in the future that Israel has to deal with we've covered this in the teachings in the last days teachings if you're new I say this often I keep on saying it you have to go back to the last day series almost 500 video sermons 18 volumes or 19 I, I think it's 19 volumes in paperback form and also online Lots of information. Information you're not going to find anywhere else. Not the kind of things that I have covered and taught on throughout the years. But 99% of all the projectiles, let's just call it, were intercepted. Intercepted by 
either David Sling or the Iron Dome or the A2A3 missile defense systems that Israel has either shot down in the air by fighter jets <clears throat> all in all it was a failure it was a failure they'll try to paint it all kinds of different ways especially in the Arab world and in also in Iran but it was nothing that they hoped for well <clears throat> Because they just wanted to send a message, is what they're saying. You kidding me? You don't send over 300 projectiles without hoping that it will do some damage. Granted, I'll give you this. They send drones, very slow drones. In fact, 170 drones. that seems to be powered by a lawnmower engine. Unfortunately, there was 32 Israelis injured, none killed. Like I said, there was 170 drones, 30 cruise missiles, and 120 ballistic missiles. The last count I heard, or read about what Iran sent over, only seven got through and did minimal damage. So all in all it was a complete failure. So then I decided, okay, let's get some statistics and information concerning what's happening as far as Gaza goes and Israel in general, in overview what they're dealing with since the beginning of this Gaza situation back in October 7th. You don't hear about it in the news except in the first few weeks basically that there were many Israelis killed. I think the count is up to 1,543 now. But there's 15,179 that have been injured when you put an overview on the Israel-Gaza war that's going on right now. There have been 604 IDF deaths, 133 hostages still. Everyone talks about just the Gazas being displaced, but there has been 123 thousand Israelis displaced along the Gaza border and also in the northern areas that are bordering Lebanon. The news media doesn't want you to know this either for some reason. There's been over 13,000 rockets of various blend of rockets over 13,000 rockets fired at Israel. 13,000. Israel has targeted Hamas locations targeted locations that they had intel concerning activities or where they received resistance. There's been 35,600 attacked targets by the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces. Out of that over 13,000 rockets fired at Israel, 9,100 plus have been from Gaza alone.
The verifiable facts on the ground is that there have been 12,000 terrorists in Gaza killed. Now, according to Hamas, they say there's been over 33,000, 33,729 killed. <clears throat> I necessarily wouldn't believe everything that's coming out of Gaza. They put their own citizens in harm's way on purpose. Now, according to Hamas, there's been over 76,300 people that have been injured in this Gaza war. Now, <clears throat> another thing you don't hear about concerning the Gaza blockade, let's just call it that. Yes, there's been 1,700,000 Gazans displaced. The Gazans have been given the information to where to go to avoid being in harm or being in harm's way, if it's possible, if Hamas allows them, with information that's been dropped from the skies. 9.3 million leaflets have been dropped in Gaza to direct them to safety to where food can be provided and water. Over 15 and a half million texts to Gazans to give them the necessary information for their daily needs. Over 17 million recorded messages. As far as water is concerned, I got the numbers down right here. Israel opened two water pipes from Israel from Israel that provides 28.5 million liters a day a day to Gaza in addition to that 1496 water trucks entered Gaza providing 30,000 tons of water As far as fuel goes, like gas, 235 fuel tankers and 457 cooking gas tankers entered Gaza. Electricity. What I'm about to say, why is this not ever reported? Hamas attacked, and this would affect their citizens. Hamas attacked 9 out of 10 power lines supplied by Israel. I guess it's not bad enough. They want to create even more misery for their citizens. And of course, the news media will be there to show all the atrocities and miserable conditions that the Gazans are facing. But by the way, some of their 10 cities are better living conditions than a lot of these Gazans were living in before this war. 22,403 aid trucks have entered into Gaza. 422,000 tons of humanitarian aid, which includes food, metal equipment, and shelter equipment. None of this is being reported. <coughs> What's being reported that Israel wants to create genocide. Wants to wipe out every Gazan in existence. At least that's the impression that they want you to have. They don't report on any of these things. I'm almost at the place where if the news media is your source of information, you deserve what you get. And you're getting nothing but misinformation.
the best thing that Trump came up with in his last campaign calling these bleeps out stating that they only provide fake news what about the Lebanon and Syria situation in northern Israel there's been 18 Israelis killed. Israel has killed 276 Hezbollah operatives. Even though it's not been declared a war, it's really close. You know how many Israeli communities had to be evacuated near that border? the border between Israel and Lebanon, 43 communities had to be evacuated. Where is the sympathy for these people? There's been no sympathy from the news media or anyone else. Over 60,700 People have been evacuated in those areas. And of course it's affected Lebanon citizens also because 90,000 had to be evacuated from that border area. Over 3,300. If anything, Israel has shown restraint. But I think they're only buying time. Because I think they have an objective. I think it's going to fill, not fill, but fulfill what I call the Obadiah objective, which I'll get to in a minute, which will be part of a fulfillment of the Psalm 83 verses. And I've said before, this Psalm 83 might become a war that goes in stages. It might take years. For this Psalm 83 war to play out. But over 3,300 plus missiles have been launched. From either Syria or Lebanon. Mostly from Lebanon. To my surprise. So far. Syria has been. Quiet compared to Lebanon and obviously Gaza. What about the West Bank? And Jerusalem? No one seems to want to bring up the 21 Israelis that were murdered by Palestinians now, Israel just not sat by and watched their citizens be murdered without dealing with the problem because they have killed 420 terrorists since the beginning of this Gaza war in the West Bank area. And they have detained 3,700 of these terrorists. I've had people that worked in prisons watching me. Just imagine the logistical problem of detaining 3,700 of evil terrorists. Israel's dealing with all of this, my friend. Everyone's coming at them from every side. And then you got Iran that want a sable rattle, which that turned out to be a big dud. And I wouldn't be surprised. Israel's response 
is going after the, some of their nuclear facilities. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I have no idea. I just wouldn't be surprised. I'm not like these other... We have fake news. We have fake prophets. And their batting average is less than 0.00001%. But they keep spewing their nonsense out there of what's going to happen next. I know the big picture, but every little detail <clears throat> has to be filled in. And it will. Last but not least, then you got the Houthis down in Yemen. There's been 66 attacks by the Houthis against Israel. 66 attacks. You know how many naval attacks against Israel? These terrorist pirates? 160. And that's not to mention what the other attacks, other naval attacks that the Houthis are carrying out. I mean, it's a hot mess, my friend. The news media doesn't report all of this because they don't want you to side with Israel. They don't want you to see what Israel's dealing with. But right now, because I've been asked, what do I have my eye on? Israel, God willing, and by the way, how many times I've told you, don't listen to the news. Yeah, Biden and Biden administration will say one thing because they're trying to pander for votes. But I don't care if there's a monkey as a president. The United States is not going to abandon Israel. Do you know the United States and Israel have been planning for months for such an attack from Iran? So Biden and his administration might be saying one thing, but they're doing just the opposite. Yeah, United Kingdom sent a jet or two but it was mostly United States and Israel in the air. Shooting down inferior weaponry. By the way, some of it provided by Russia. Some of it provided by Russia. You take the nukes out of the equation, and I've said this before, even Russia is not that impressive. How long they've been in Ukraine? Think about it. But let me get back to this. What I'm keeping my eye on is the northern front of Israel. I believe the southern front, Gaza, will be dealt with. I believe they'll go to Rafah. I believe they will root out these terrorists. And I don't know what type of administration will be placed in the Gaza Strip. I don't know if it's going to be a world participation. If the UN tries to get in there, I have no reason not to believe that would be a complete failure. 
And I'll tell you the reasons why in a minute. But my eye is on the northern front. The last war that Israel had with Lebanon, and at the conclusion of that, a UN agreement, United Nations, was put in place. All of Hezbollah forces were supposed to be located north of, Le of the Latani River in Lebanon. Put a map up. That's a map of southern Lebanon. You go up and you see the Latani River. You start the Mediterranean Sea there. It's above Tyre. You see the Latani River. Hezbollah was not to cross that river and put any of their people south of that river. That was according to the UN agreement that supposedly was supposed to be enforced, which that agreement was part of the ending of that last war. Hezbollah forces were supposed to be located north of the Latani River. Now I am convinced the things I won't even share tonight, that Israel is preparing to move into all the way to the Latani River. They want that buffer zone. They need that buffer zone. Now those arrows on that map means nothing. I just had to try to find a map that showed the Latani River. Did Hezbollah abide by that agreement? No, he, they didn't. And because of that, the northern border areas, 43 communities have been evacuated because they are in serious danger because of the incoming rockets. Do you think Hezbollah is going to withdraw and move back north of the Latani River? No, they're not. And by the way, there's about 2,000 UN forces that are supposed to police this. I got news for you. The Boy Scouts would do a better job. Keep the map up than the UN forces. Are you serious? I'm absolutely serious. Look, I mean, the, the proof is obvious. Hezbollah's moved below the Latani River, and they are operating and shooting rockets in close proximity to Israel's border. So what does it mean? The operation in southern Lebanon is being prepared as I speak, and has been, be, been going through a process of preparation for months now, that once the IDF crosses the border, more than likely it will mean an all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah. Another part of possibly the Psalm 83 war. And that's not the only thing. There's multiple ways that this conflict in the Middle East will blow up and spiral out of control. Now why is it important? I want you to keep it on that map until I tell you differently. Because you go to Obadiah, it's only one chapter. It's between Daniel and Joel. There's some verses there concerning the day of the Lord, which has not happened yet. I'm not, excuse me, I'm not. Did I say Daniel and Joel? No. Hang on, I'm wrong. Oh, there you go. 
it's between Amos and Jonah. It's one chapter, 21 verses. Starting with verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. That day the Lord has not happened yet. As thou hast done, it shall be done. And I know what some of these preachers preach. Well, this all happened in around 700 or 800 B.C. Yeah, well, go back, go, go listen to them if you really believe what they're saying. I didn't want to even address it, really tell you the truth. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return unto thine own head. Mostly this is referring to the area of Edom, which is not in the areas that you see there in the map, but we'll get to it. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. By the way, I believe, we're not getting into much details tonight, that is also the United States of America. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and they shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. That's not happened yet. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines. That's in the process. And they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Now here we go. These are the verses I want to get to. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites. Possess. Let that sink in. It says, And the captivities of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites. Where? Well, it says, Even unto Zarephath. And the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, shall possess the city of the south. And saviors, actually it's a bad translation, and deliverers shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Well, that's going to happen towards the very end, but go back to verse 20. And the capacity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath. See, Israelis know this. They know what the future holds for them because they believe these verses to be true. Well, where is Zarephath? Well, look at that map. You see where Tyre is? That's kind of like pointing out towards the Mediterranean Sea there on the screen. You keep going north. You see the Latani River, right? The Latani River runs east or west to east or east to west. If you go all the way to the gray area in the middle, that's Israel that runs up to that area. It's almost parallel with the Latani River, Israel's northern border. But if you go just north of Tyre, and then keep traveling, and remember, this is not a very big area. The Latani River, just north of the Latani River, is Zarephath. Just north of it. Just north of where that line was drawn by the UN, P. 
peace treaty that has not been kept by Hezbollah is where you'll find the Seraphath area. What Obadiah is saying, you almost could call this an Obadiah war, possibly in the Psalm 83 war events. And the capacity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites even unto Zarephath. And then the rest of the scripture talks about the south. And I really believe some of this mountain talk is also referring to what the Dome of the Rock sits in or sits on. Just think about it. How careless. Now, do I know the Iranians don't really put that much importance in the Dome of the Rock? Yes. Yes. Listen, the caliphates for the last 1400 years have been fighting over territory and what areas should be the most holy and what areas should be the ones directing all Muslims of this world and guiding them. What caliph should be to do the speaking and what caliph should be followed. I know all the arguments. But just think about it. And if you saw the videos on the evening of these drones and these rockets coming in. Remember, Israel is not a very big area. Jerusalem doesn't, is not a very big area. In the night skies, you can see all these things being blown up. Not that far from the vicinity of the Dome of the Rock. Something's going to happen in my opinion. Where Israel takes over that mount completely. Will it be for, before Jesus returns? We'll see. I think there's a good possibility of that. But one thing is for sure, it definitely would be under Jesus' control and no one can say a darn thing about it. No one what's what at all <clears throat> so Israel knows what they're dealing with Israel knows the scriptures the Old Testament scriptures and what still is expected to happen in the future <clears throat> you could talk about a two-state solution all you want Israel knows better. The rest of the world has to catch up. Now, war is ugly. There's rights and wrongs on both sides, mostly wrongs. But if I had to pick a side, I'm going to pick a side that <clears throat> is stated in God's Word by what prophetically needs to happen. And who am I to challenge it? Only the ones that don't believe God's word to be the truth will be dumb enough to challenge it. I mean, in Zechariah chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, Israel more specific, Jerusalem will be a cup of trembling unto all the people around about it. And that's what you're seeing. But all the people and the burdens themselves, according to Scripture, will be cut down in pieces. Even though all the people gather against it. I know the outcome. I have the big picture 
insight. All the events that need to happen and all the details of those events will play out. And then we could look back. Not like some fool prophetically saying this is going to happen because the Lord told me this or the Lord told me that. No. We've been giving all the prophetic knowledge that we need to see the big picture. The details will be filled in and we can have that aha moment. To see how God fills those details in. Because in Zephaniah he says, For the day will come where I will raise up as a witness. Therefore wait upon me until the day that the Lord rises up. Now, <clears throat> I was going to try to get to a question. Actually, I've had several different questions come in concerning how do I know that Muhammad was possessed? How do I know that? Well, first of all, most people even know what possession is. There's physical and spiritual. There's mental possessions. Muhammad had a combination of all of it. And I was going to review some of those possession characteristics that could clearly identify he was possessed. If you're interested, maybe I'll do that next time. We go live, but only if you're interested. Now that's the update. That's the real news of what's going on in the ground and how people are being affected and what Israel's providing to the Gazans. And that's just what Israel's providing. That's not even mentioning what the rest of the world is doing, including the United States. No, they're not going hungry. That's media propaganda. Don't believe it. Now, if you're interested for me to continue on Muhammad and his possession, let me know. I want to hear from you. Play the song.